Hello friends, this video on friction part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next, the sliding friction is the force of friction that acts between objects in contact and sliding or moving with respect to each other. So as the name suggests, sliding friction. So when the objects are sliding, then comes the concept of sliding friction. Now this sliding friction is also known as kinetic friction. Now kinetic word is used for anything which is in motion. So since this type of friction exists when the objects are in motion, so this is also called kinetic friction. Now let us take again an example of a toy car. So let's say you have a toy car and you move this car on the floor. So which are the two objects which are in contact? So the first object is the toy car and the second object is the floor. So let us say toy car is say object A, we call the toy car as object A and we call the floor as object B. So A and B are the two objects which are in contact. Now initially the car is at rest but when you apply some amount of force to the car, so what happens? The value of static friction also increases. It reaches its limiting value beyond which the car starts to move. When the car starts to move, what happens? Here you can see A is moving with respect to B. Correct? Similarly, B is moving with respect to A. So what do we mean by that? It is the same concept as the example of a train. So when you are sitting inside the train, you feel that the things outside the train is moving. For example, when you are sitting inside a train which is moving, what do you feel? You feel that the platform is moving in the opposite direction. That is what you feel. But actually the platform is not moving. But with respect to you, the platform is moving in the opposite direction. But with respect to somebody who is on the platform, you are moving in a particular direction. So that means with respect to the floor, this car is moving towards right. Correct? But with respect to the car, with respect to somebody who is inside the car, with respect to that person, B is moving in this direction with respect to A. Right? So now you understand the concept of with respect, moving with respect to something else. So here we can see that these two objects, they are moving with respect to each other. So if you look at it from a neutral perspective, you might feel that the floor is not at all moving. It is only the car which is moving. But when we talk in terms of respect to each other, we mean that with respect to the car, the floor is moving. With respect to the floor, the car is moving. Correct? So now let us suppose that the car is moving with a velocity v or with a speed v. Now right now you don't distinguish between speed and velocity. You will learn their differences in your higher classes. And let us suppose, so in that case for somebody who is inside the car, he will feel that the floor is moving with the same velocity but in the opposite direction. So what would be the force of friction in this case? So in this case, so in this case, we can say that force of friction on A with respect to B. What will be the force of friction on A with respect to B? So with respect to B, A is moving in right direction with velocity V. So force of friction will act in the opposite direction which is this direction. So therefore the force of friction will be towards left and let us call this as small f, denoted by small f. Now similarly what would be the force of friction on B with respect to A? So if you see B is the floor. So floor is moving with respect to A in this direction. So the force of friction will be opposite to the direction of movement. So the force of friction would be in this direction. So this would be in this direction F. So this force of friction is nothing but kinetic friction because these force of friction, they act on the objects when they are moving. So if you talk about the direction of sliding friction, we will say that sliding friction opposes relative motion because here we are talking about motion relative to 
the other surface therefore it opposes the relative motion so on this object with respect to on object a with respect to object b force of friction is in this direction on object b with respect to a force of friction is in the opposite direction so you might say that okay we have two forces of friction in two directions so net force of friction should be zero but that is absolutely incorrect because when we are talking about something with respect to B, then we will consider everything with respect to B. So when I say force of friction, I mean, if I just give you a scenario that, okay, the car is moving on the surface, tell me what will be the direction of force of friction. So you must ask that with respect to what? So am I supposed to tell you the force of friction with respect to A or with respect to B? Because the value of force of friction or the direction of force of friction will change depending upon the reference which we are using. So if we are talking in terms of respect to A, the direction will be something else. If we are talking in terms of respect to B, the direction will again be different. So this is the concept of sliding friction. So please remember that sliding friction always opposes the relative motion between two surfaces. So let me take another example for your clearer understanding. Now here I have complicated the scenario a little more. So in this scenario what I did was instead of keeping the toy car directly on the floor I have placed a truck. So now we have a truck and the toy car is placed over the truck. So the toy car is not moving on its own. In fact the truck is moving. Now since the car is placed on the truck so obviously the car will also move with the truck. So this is the car, let me denote it by C and this is the truck, truck or bus, whatever you call it. Maybe we'll call it bus so it will be easier to denote it as B. So this is the bus and this is the car. So now when you see from the road, what do you see? You see that both B and C are moving because C is placed above B. So if B is moving, C will also move. So when you look at the vehicles standing on the road, you feel that both B and C are moving towards this direction, towards the right direction. So that is what you see from the road. Correct? But when you talk about in terms of or with respect to B and C, the entire scenario changes. So in that case, let's see here what happens. So when we, you compare only these two, in that case, it is seen that C movement of C with respect to B. So C moving with respect to B. So if somebody inside the bus is observing the car, what will he feel, he or she feel, where is the car moving? Because the bus is moving in this direction. So for somebody inside the bus, he will feel that the car is moving in which direction? So for that person, he might feel that the car is moving towards the left, that is the opposite direction. So what would be the friction? So we can say that friction on C with respect to B. So what will be friction on C with respect to B? So frictional force acting on C would be in this direction because the bus is moving in this direction. So the velocity of the bus is V in this direction. So the friction on B due to C would be in this direction but the friction on C with respect to B would be in this direction. Now similarly, friction on B with respect to C would be in the opposite direction. So whenever we talk about sliding friction, it always is in terms of relative motion. That is, the movement is happening with respect to which object. And whatever is the direction of movement, just opposite to that would be the direction of sliding friction. Now, when we talk about sliding friction, the value of sliding friction differs for different types of surfaces. For example, it is smaller for smooth surfaces when compared to rough surfaces. Now, let us see what happens. So here we have a smooth surface and here we have a rough surface. So when we have a smooth surface, the irregularities are less. So here also, if you observe it minutely, there will be some irregularities on the surface, but the irregularities on rough surface would be more. So now if you have 
a car which you want to uh, drive on a smooth surface or let us suppose this is a toy car and you want to move it on a smooth surface so you just need to apply a small amount of force and that would be able to make it move right so in case of a smooth surface less force needed to make it move because the surface is smooth so the friction offered is also less but in case of a rough surface if you want to make the same toy car move on a rough surface since there are a lot of ups and downs so your the car will not move that smoothly so here more force would be needed to make it move so why do you need more force that is because the force of friction is also more so in case of rough surfaces sliding friction is more when compared to that in case of a smooth surface thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again